Hello, and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe 2024. I am your messenger of the Word of God, Shenandoah Briscoe, and today we will be covering 1 Samuel 22 through 24 and Luke 12, 1 through 31. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice and articulation and a smooth reading of your Word so that it may be a blessing to you and for all those who have tuned in from all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, Amen. David at Alvin and Mezna. 1 Samuel 22. David left Gath and escaped to the caves of Avalon. When his brothers and his father's household heard about it, they went down to him there. All those who were in distress or in debt or disconnected gathered around him and he became their commander about 400 men were with him from there David went to Mespa in Moab and said to the king of Moab would you let my father and mother come and stay with you until I learn what God will do for me and so he left them with the king of Moab and they stayed with him as long as David was in the stronghold. But the prophet Gad said to David, Do not stay in the stronghold. Go into the land of Judea. And so David left and went to the forest of Hereth. Saul kills the priests of Nob. Now Saul heard that David and his men had been discovered, and Saul was seated, spear in hand, under the Tamarisk tree on the hill at Gibeah, with all his officials standing at his side. He said to them, Listen, men of Benjamin, will the son of Jesse give all you the fields and vineyards? And will he make all of you commanders of ten of thousands and commanders of hundreds? Is that why you have all conspired against me? No one else tells me when my son makes a covenant with the son of Jesse. None of you is connected, uh, uh, concerned about me, or tells me that my son has incited me, my servant to lie and wait for me. He has done as he does today. But Deoge, the Adamite, who was standing with Saul's officials, said, I saw the son of Jesse come to Amalek, son of Adhub at Nob. Amalek inquired of the Lord for him. He also gave provisions and the sword of Goliath, the, the Philistine. And then the king sent for the priest Amalek, son of Adhub, and all the men of his family who were the priests at Nob. And they all came to the king. And Saul said, Listen now, son of Ahatub. Yes, my lord, he answered. Saul said to him, Why have you conspired against me, you and the sons of Jesse, giving him bread and a sword and inquiring of God for him? And so that he has rebelled against me and lies in wait for me as he does today. Amalek answered the king, Who of your servants is as loyal to, as David, the king's son-in-law, captain of your bodyguard, and highly respected in your household? Was that day the first time I inquired of God for him? Of course not. Let not the king accuse your servant of any of his father's families, for your servant knows nothing at all about this whole affair. But the king said, You will surely die, Amalek, you and your whole family. And then the king ordered the guards at his side, Turn and kill the priests and of the Lord, because they too have sided with David. They knew he was clean, yet 
they did not tell him. But the king's officials were unwilling to raise a hand to strike the priests of the Lord. And the king then ordered Ndioji mm, to turn and strike down mm, the priests. And so Doge the Yadamite turned and he struck them down. And that day he killed eighty-five men who wore the linen ephod. He also put to the sword Nob, the town of the priests, with its men and women, its children and infants, and its cattle, donkeys and sheep. But one son of Amalek, son of Adhub, named Abarathar, escaped and fled to join David. He told David that Saul had killed the priests of the Lord. Then David said to Abarath, That day when Do Doge the Edomite was there, I knew he would be sure to tell Saul, I am responsible for the death of your whole family. Stay with me. Don't be afraid. The man who wants to kill you is trying to kill me too. You will be safe with me. David saves Kelia. 1 Samuel 23 When David was told, Look, the Philistines are fighting against Kelia and are looting the thresh, threshing floors, he inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go and attack the Philistines? And the Lord answered him, Go attack the Philistines and save Shiloh. But David's men said to him, Here in Judea we are afraid. How much more then if we go to Kelah against the Philistine forces? Once again David inquired of the Lord, and mm, the Lord answered him, Go down to Kelah, for I am going to give the Philistines into your hands. And so David and his men went to Kelah fought the Philistines and carried off their livestock. He inflicted heavy losses on the Philistines and saved the people of Kela. Now Abathar, son of Amalek, had brought the ephod down with him when he fled to David at Kileth. Saul pursues David. Saul was told that David had gone to Kela, and he said, God has delivered him into my hands, for David has imprisoned himself by entering a town with gates and bars. And Saul called up all his forces for battle to go down to Kela to besiege David and his men. When David learned that Saul was plotting against him, he said to Abarath, The priest, bring, bring the ephod. David said, Lord God of Israel, your servant has heard definitely that Saul plans to come to Keleth and destroy the town on account of me. Will the citizens of Keleth surrender me to him? Will Saul come down as your servant has heard? Lord God of Israel, tell your servant. And the Lord said, He will. Again David asked, Will the citizens of Keleth surrender me and my men to Saul? And the Lord said, They will. And so David and his men, about six hundred in number, left Kelah, and they kept moving from place to place. And when Saul was told that David had escaped from Kelah, he did not go there. David stayed in the wilderness strongholds and in the hills of the desert of Zephah. Day after day, Saul searched for him, but God did not give David into his hands. While David was at Horish in the desert of Zephah, he learned that Saul had come out to take his life. And Saul's son, Jonathan, went to David at Horish and helped him find strength in God. Don't be afraid, he said. My father, Saul, will not lay a hand on you. You will be king over Israel, and I will be second to you, even my father Saul knows this. And the two of them made a covenant before the Lord. Then Jonathan went back home. But David reminded, uh, remained in Horish. The Zephites went up to Saul 
at Gibeah and said, Is not David hiding among us in the strongholds at Horish, on the hill of Hecala, south of Jeshua? Now, your majesty, come down there whenever it pleases you to do so, and we will be responsible for giving him into your hands. And Saul replied, The Lord bless you for your concern for me. Go and get more information. Find out where David usually goes and who has seen him there. They tell me he is very crafty. Find out about all the hiding places he uses and come back to me with definite information. Then I will go with you. If he is in the area, I will take him down among all the clans of Judea. And so they set out, and they went to Zepha ahead of Saul. Now David and his men were in the desert of Moan, Moan in the Arab, south of Jeshimon. Now Saul and his men began to search, and when David was told about it, he went down to Barak and stayed in the desert of Moan. When Saul heard this, he went into the desert of Moan in pursuit of David. Saul was going along one side of the mountains, and David and his men were on the other side, hurrying to get away from Saul. And as Saul and his horses were closing in on David and his men to capture them, a message came to Saul, saying, Come quickly, the Philistines are riding and are raiding the land. And then Saul broke off his pursuit of David, and he went to meet the Philistines. That is why they called this place Selahemelechoth. And David went up from there, and he lived in the strongholds of in Gedi. David spares Saul's life. 1 Samuel 24 After Saul returned from pursuing the Philistines, he was told, David is in the desert of in Gedi. And so Saul t took 3,000 able young men from all Israel and set out to look for David and his men near the craze of the wild goats. He came to the sheep pens along the way. A cave was there, and Saul went in to relieve himself. David and his men were far back in the cave. The men said, This is the day of the Lord. And spoke uh, the Lord spoke of when he said to you, I will give your enemy into your hands for you to deal with as you wish. Then David crept up unnoticed, and he cut off a corner of Saul's robe. Afterward, David was conscience-stricken for having cut off a corner of his robe. And he said to his men, the Lord forbid that I should do such a thing to my master, the Lord's anointed, or lay my hands on him, for he is the anointed of the Lord. With these words, David sharply rebuked his men and did not allow them to attack Saul. And Saul left the cave and went his way. Then David went out of the cave and called out to Saul, My lord the king, when Saul looked behind him, David bowed down and prostrated himself with his face to the ground. And he said to Saul, Why do you listen when men say David is bent on harming you? This day you have seen with your own eyes how the Lord delivered you into my hands in the cave. Some urged me to kill you, but I spared you. I said, I will not lay my hand on my Lord, because he is the Lord's anointed. See, my father, look at this piece of your robe in my hand. I cut it off the corner of your robe, but didn't kill, kill you. See, that there is nothing in my hand to indicate that I am guilty of wrongdoing or rebellion. I have not wronged you, but you are hunting me down to take my life. May the Lord judge between you and me. 
and may the Lord avenge the wrong you have done to me, but my hand will not touch you. As the old saying goes, from evildoers comes evil deeds, and so my hand will not touch you. Against whom has the king of Israel come out? Who are you pursuing? A dead dog? A flea? May the Lord be our judge and decide between us. May he consider my case and uphold it, and may he vindicate me by delivering me from your hand. And when David finished saying this, Saul asked, Is that your voice, David, my son? And he wept aloud. You are more righteous than I, he said. You have treated me well, but I have treated you badly. You have just now told me about the good that you did me, and the Lord delivered me into your hands, but you did not kill me. And when a man finds his enemy, does not he, does he let him get away unharmed? May the Lord reward you well for the way that you treated me today. I know that you will surely be king, and that the kingdom of Israel will be established in your hands. Now, swear to me by the Lord that you will not kill off my descendants, or wipe out my name from my father's family. And so David gave his oath to Saul, and then Saul returned home. But David and his men went up to a stronghold. Go to sleep. That was First Samuel 22 through 24, and now we will be going to Luke 12. So let us turn to Luke 12. Luke 12. Warnings and encouragements. Luke 12. Meanwhile, when the crowd of many thousands had gathered so that they were trampling one another, Jesus began to speak first to his disciples, saying, Be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed, or hidden that will not be made known. What you have said in the dark will be heard in the daylight, and what you have whispered in the ear in the inner rooms will be proclaimed from the roofs. I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body and after and that can do no more. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who after your body has been killed has authority to throw you into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? And yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. And don't be afraid that you are worth more than many sparrows. I tell you, whoever publicly acknowledged me before others, the Son of Man will also acknowledge before the angels of God. But whoever down uh, disowns me before others will be disowned before the angels of God. And everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But everyone who blasphemies against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. When you are brought before synagogues, rulers, and authorities, do not worry about how you will defend yourselves or what you will say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what you should say. The Parable of the Rich Fool Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, Watch out 
and be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest, and he thought to himself, What shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, This is what I will do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones, and there I will store my surplus grain. And I will say to myself, You have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you, and then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich towards God. Do not worry. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens, they do not sow or reap, and yet have no storeroom or barn, and yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable are you than birds? Who of you? By worrying, can add a single hour to your life. Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the wildflowers grow. They do not labor or spin, and yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. And if that is how, God clothes the grass of the fields, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire. How much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink, and do not worry about it. For the pagan world runs after all such things, and your father knows that you need them, and but seeks his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. And there you have it. That was Luke 12, 1 through 31, which concludes the Bible with Frisco 2024 for today. Tomorrow we will be covering 1 Samuel 25 through 26 and Luke 12, 32 through 59. Father, I just thank you for your word. Because if it were not for your word, I cannot be your messenger of the word. And so I give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. I'd like to thank you folks for tuning in to the Bible with Briscoe 2024. And as always, you know, God loves you and so do I. So come back and see us again tomorrow because, well, God willing, we'll be here. And we hope that you are too. Please like and share.